Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Let's <clears throat> begin with the coming back of former President Lungu into active politics. His decision seemed not to have been welcomed by some stakeholders and uh, he has continued receiving criticism. Do you still feel his decision was a good move? It couldn't have been any better. His decision was timely and uh, was well thought through. Uh, on the 28th of October 2023 when President Edgar Lungu decided to make that announcement it was after deep reflection he went through a thought process and he informed some of us that he was in deep reflection and was consulting so it did come at the right time right time because as uh, your listeners will be aware the time leading to the 28th of october 2023 was a very challenging period for us because a number of people thought that there was a vacuum at the presidency of the patriotic front they did not understand that president edgar lungu had not vacated the seat of president of the patriotic front he had simply taken sabbatical leave he had taken leave because he had decided that he would go out of active politics however he still retained the position of president albeit on leave to allow for us to organize an extraordinary general conference where we would have elected his successor. And only after that election would that position have been occupied by another person besides President Edgar Lungu. Now, when we saw that there was this rush for that seeming vacuum at the presidency, we thought that it was wise for President Lungu to come back and fill in the void so to avoid all that confusion that was taking place. So it was a good decision, it was timeless, and we ought to commend President Edgar Lungu for taking that sacrificial position because all of the listeners are aware of the fact that by him deciding to hold back his position, to take back his position of president, it meant, therefore, that he would be considered to have gone into active politics, and we knew that uh, the system under Hagainde Hijidema would use that or abuse it to deny President Edgar Lungu the benefits that accrue to the office or to the person who held the presidency of the Republic of Zambia. Mm. Now, he did that very consciously, and he knew the consequences of that. He did indicate himself in the statement that he made on the 28th of October that he was doing that very alive to the fact that there would be consequences that would follow that decision. But he decided to do that because he realized that uh, the Patriotic Front uh, is a party to which he owes a huge debt. It is the Patriotic Front that made him a member of parliament in the first place. It was the Patriotic Front that made him mini deputy minister and minister, secretary general, and finally president of the Republic of Zambia. And he himself declared that he felt indebted to saving the Patriotic Front. Mm. And, and when you make reference to the confusion that uh, prompted him to come back, are you referring to the confusion of uh, the uh, Mao Sampa, uh, which were obviously instigated by Mao Sampa? And uh, had that not happened, do you feel that uh, he would not have made this? Uh, you know, the rush for the presidency started uh, soon after President Edgar Lungu declared that he was going on leave and that within a year would hold an extraordinary conference to elect his successor. Then the, in, the, in the party became a rush for the presidency. You heard people going around the country, you heard people sponsoring uh, supporters and they were active on social media, they were active in newspapers, campaigning for this and the other.
And uh, that culminated, obviously, in uh, the strange behavior of one Miles Sampa, who thought that he could dribble the whole system by declaring himself a president. So it all culminated into that, but it wasn't the only incidents. The Mao Sampa was just the culmination of a sequence of events. Mm. You may recall that... Uh, this was, this was uh, at the helm of your leadership. It was at the helm of my leadership as the Would party. Would you say you were not in charge and you did not take control of the party I to took, make sure there was discipline? I took total control of the party, and that is the reason why you saw that uh, whoever decided to do things that were not in accordance with the Constitution had to do it outside the party. He did not do it within the party. Had he tried to do it within the party, he would have been stopped. But he decided to do it outside the party. So we in the Central Committee, with me at the top of the, of, of the whole system, were totally in charge. You may have seen that uh, after we had several discussions with those who had contended to take over pre from President Edgar Lungu, there was quiet in the party. Everybody agreed that we ought to work with one common purpose, to hold the party together. And all the others agreed that what was in the party was bigger than what their personal interests were. This was the reason why you saw that the social media campaigns came to a close. Everybody agreed that we shall forge ahead and agree on the program that is going to lead us to the extraordinary conference. But one renegade decided that he would do otherwise. And by the way, by the time he was doing that, he had already been suspended. He was only saved by the injunction that uh, was given to him, was granted to him by Judge Katenekwa. But the truth of the matter that is that he had already been thrown out of the party. And what was to follow was a hearing to determine what would have happened to him after the Committee on Discipline. But, but Honorable, uh, by, the, by the mere fact that uh, there were uh, nominations uh, done and and candidates potential candidates had to pay a fee of two hundred thousand kwacha and they decided to start campaigning as as a democratic party. We should have allowed we should have allowed the, the, those uh, candidates to really go out and campaign. I mean, uh, not to demean anyone, but to freely go out and campaign. And in campaigning, probably they were going to uh, keep the party afloat through mobilisation. Let let your viewers take this very correctly mm. there was no filing of nominations that was done at all what was done was expression of interest to contest and there's a big difference between registering interest and filing nominations and the person is not allowed to campaign until and after they have filed nominations. And nominations, according to the Constitution of the Patriotic Front, will be announced by the Central Committee and may take place even one day before the holding of the National Council. What we did at that time was just to assess and see how many of our members had interest in contesting the presidency. So when we say to them, come and register your interest, we did not say that we have now opened for campaigns. We hadn't. And as a matter of fact, the meeting that suspended Mao Samba came up with a program of action where we had indicated that by such a debt, we will now open for people to start campaigning and we'll come up with the modalities to be used to campaign. You don't go and tell people, you have filed in your interest, and now you can campaign in any way and any format that you wish. You ought to draw a clear program and indicate what is the modus that you're going to use to campaign. Where are you going to campaign? How are you going to campaign? Because you are campaigning in for an internal election. Do you go out and campaign on all radio stations, or do you go out and campaign individually to electorates, or do you go as a group because this is internal elections? All those modalities had to be put in place. So, my dear friend Zach, there was no reason whatsoever for us to open up nominations. This is uh, campaigns because we hadn't filed nominations mm. yet. And, and, and there's been controversy around the, uh, the figures that were involved in what you have uh, uh, stated as interest. Uh, 200,000 kwacha each. Uh, and this has, uh, has brought about uh, controversy in terms of would they get refunds now that uh, the situation is as is. And there were questions also about where the money went to. And I think Mao Samba used that as part of his reason. 
Right. <clears throat> uh, fortunately for us, uh, six of the contestants were and are still members of the Central Committee. Six, except one now, Mayo Sampa. So at the time when they were filing in nominations, the eight of them, six were members of the Central Committee. And those six sat in the Central Committee meeting that determined the expression of interest fee of 200,000. There were obviously divergent views. There were some who thought we're making it very expensive for people to aspire for leadership in the right. party because that would have a consequence that uh, in the next general elections, general conference, those who would be aspiring to be members of the Central Committee you might have to pay a huge amount of money. Right. But uh, democracy dictated, and you know that democracy may not necessarily be right, but the majority took the day, and the majority were of the view that the 200,000 kwacha was the right figure for filing in of expression of interest. And that's how we settled for the 200,000 kwacha. The second thing that ought to be understood is that <clears throat> this was a non-refundable fee. Right. Totally non-refundable. And because it was non-refundable, the Central Committee has no obligation to go back to the people who paid the 200000 to explain to them how that money was used. Because it was not as though we were keeping it on their behalf. They had paid it voluntarily to the party, and the party had the mandate to utilize it in whatever way it fe so fit. And for anyone to come to the party and say, can you now account only for that, those 200,000 kwachas, it is folly because there is a process by which the central committee of the party accounts for all party funds. And those who are interested must wait for the time when the party is uh, mandated to provide a financial report to its members. There is no hurry and there is no reason to treat that money separate from all the other monies that the party is handling. Mm. There is no reason whatsoever. And whoever quarrels and says, I want to know how my 200,000 kwacha was spent, must go back to their mind and ask themselves, were we told that the 200,000 kwacha was being held on their behalf? No. They voluntarily released that money to the custody and utiliz utilization of the party, and therefore were not obliged to disclose to anyone how their 200,000 kwacha was spent, because that became party money and shall be accounted for together with all the other funds that are under the control of the party. Let's get back to uh, the issue of the president, former president uh, uh, Lungu's comeback. One of his reasons, like you rightly put it, was uh, for his coming back was basically to save the patriotic front. Is this happening, this one? Yes, to a large extent it is. And I think that things might have been different hadn't he come back. Mm -hmm. So it is good that he came back. And, uh, you know, you can't go into speculation and start imagining what would have happened hadn't he come back and so on and so forth. The fact that he's back and we're where we are, we ought to say, yes, his comeback has contributed to us being where we are and us getting stronger and stronger. How would you describe... I mean, I mean, just share with us how that is happening, how the party is stronger, because it remains divided as far as we know. The party it, it remains in faction. The, the party is not divided at all. You know, let's not exaggerate the impact that Mao Sampa is having on the party. Let us not exaggerate that. I mentioned to you that I was in Indola yesterday. There were more than 3,000 people who came to attend uh, Mrs. Ngambi's uh, burial. And I met with uh, a lot of those members. Not a single one of them came to me to say, I belong to my Osamba. No. Everybody who was there was singing songs of praise for the Patriotic Front and for Edgar Chagwalongo. So let's not, uh, you know... Uh, create a storm in a teacup over this issue of Mao Sampa. The issue of Mao Sampa is a small little uh, issue that deserves no serious attention by any serious member of the party and any serious member of our society. What we must be concerned about is, number one, what is motivating Mao Sampa to do what he is doing? And is Mao Sampa working alone? The example I like to give is that, you know, a, a tool that has surrendered itself to be abused or used is also subject and vulnerable to being abused. And as far as I'm concerned, this is not a scheme by Mao Sampa. 
Mao Sampa doesn't have the capacity to do what he's doing on his own. Mao Sampa does not have the capacity to marshal all the number of police officers that were brought to his, uh, uh, to, to his uh, support on the 24th of October. He wouldn't have that muscle. Mao Sampa wouldn't have the muscle to marshal ZNBC to go and cover his uh, dubious uh, meeting, his independence celebration turned into a convention without the support of the state, especially on Independence Day, on a day when Zambia was being visited by a foreign president. It has never happened in the history of Zambia. It has never happened anywhere in the world when there is a national celebration that an opposition political party leader goes to hold a convention. Never. It is taboo. It is unheard of. Anywhere in the world, it is unheard of. When there is a national day such as Independence Day, the whole country is focused on celebrating that national day. For us in Zambia, we saw Mao Sampa being supported with ZNBC. Cameras shifted from State House straight to Molongushi KK Wing to go and cover that, that meeting. Are you sure that Mao Sampa has that capacity? No. Do you think that Mao Sampa has the capacity to go to Parliament and just tell the Speaker, Speaker, can you remove this one and that one? I am now the new President. Do you think he has that capacity? No. Mao Sampa, in this case, must actually be, uh, you know, uh, pitied. He's, he's, he's unfortunately allowed himself to be abused. Whatever tools that are making him have the capacity which you are questioning is working. Because... Mm -hmm. Uh, he's, he's got that impact in Parliament. I mean, we've seen it in by-elections where uh, only those nominations that are signed by him are being considered and not uh, those that are signed by your, uh, your, your office or indeed uh, Honorable Nakachula's office. You know, the beauty of life is that when uh, you abuse systems and you are being deceitful, your deceit does not last for too long. It doesn't. When uh, you cause injury, and do injury to others, it does not last. So as far as we're concerned, this is just but a passing cloud. Soon and very soon, the Zambians out there, they are seeing, just like you are saying, people are seeing how come the Electoral Commission of Zambia has come up with regulations purely assigned to make sure that the patriotic front is annihilated in favor of a stooge. How are come? Are you worried that that is likely to happen at presidential uh, nominations in 2026 as well? I mean, they would be able to probably accept Mao Sampa's candidature as that of the patriotic you front. Mu you, you must and not uh, uh, whoever, in this case, probably is here or not. Zach, you must be aware of the fact that the power of the country vests in the people. The power of running this country vests in the people. The question that ought to be asked is how many Zambians are applauding at what is happening now? How many Zambians are happy to see that Nelly Muti, Speaker of the National Assembly, having received a letter from the PF expelling Mao Sampa, decides to give herself the power to say, I have no power to declare the seat of Matero vacant because the matter is in court. And yet, at the same time, the very next week, she decides to assign to herself the power to recognize Mao Sampa as president. Of course, rather frustrated at the rate at which these matters are being handled. This is an urgent national matter, which, in my view, deserved to be att addressed to uh, with speed and expediency. That having been said, I still hold some confidence, some confidence in the judiciary. Because the judges don't come from Mars. The judges live amongst us. And they too are alive to the fact that this, what is happening, is a travesty of democracy. Now, we're waiting. But what we also are confident in is that the Zambian people, the owners of this country, the ones from whom all institutions of governance borrow power, are watching. And if anyone thinks 
that they can stretch the patience of the patriotic front and the patience of the people until 2026. They must watch the space. I was very happy to hear Inspector General of Police alleging that I, given Lubinda and the party, the patriotic front, were fanning violence. We never did anything like that. So, the question is, what led Grafeo Musamba to make that allegation? It is because he himself realizes what they are doing is inimical to the interests of people and that people are bound to rise. And because he's anticipating that, he wants to preempt by saying Lubinda is the one who's fanning violence. So that in case there is anything that erupts, he comes after me. But I told him, if he has that information, let him come even before that violence erupts. That's his job. His job is prevention of despondency. That's his job. His job is to make sure that he prevents violence. So it is his job, if indeed he has any evidence that we in the patriotic front are fanning violence, are abating violence, or are encouraging any disorder, let him stop us by coming to us and taking us to court. So this only goes to show that they themselves know that what they are doing is actually, is actually calling for a reaction. When Hagai Ndehijidema went to the rally and said we're going to change him in Galato, what do you think that was fed by? It was fed by the fear that soon and very soon, if things continue along this trajectory, people are bound to rise. And I can assure you, the Zambian people are watching. And if they think that they can annihilate the patriotic front through Mao Zamba, then they have it wrong. And the power, I want to emphasize, the power still vests in the people. All those in institutions of governance are only exercising borrowed power. Ultimately, the people's will shall prevail. How do you respond to allegations uh, from the chief government spokesperson in Honorable Cornelius Tumaitua, suggesting that former President Edgar Lumi has lots of money here in Zambia, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, no wonder his surrogates in this case a reference to you uh, and, and, and your uh, followers of the Patriotic Front want him to stand in 2026. I would like to advise my young brother Cornelius. Cornelius ought to be a little bit more humble and uh, focused. The position that he holds is no longer chairperson for information and publicity of an opposition political party. He is chief government spokesman. So he must be very careful. When he wants to speak as an ordinary politician, as chairperson for information for his party, he must do so. But when he speaks as government spokesperson, he must be careful that he trades away from conjecture and especially from uh, untruths. However, in response to what he said about Edgar Lungu having money in Zambia and everywhere else, all that one has to do is to draw an inference to Haga Inde Hijidema in the opposition. Haga Inde Hijidema himself posted and sent sponsors of his, people he sponsored to claim that he was one of the richest Zambians. You saw the press releases about Haga Inde Hijidema having had millions of dollars on, in offshore accounts. And to date, he has refused to declare his asset base. And during that time, from 2006, after the demise of, of uh, Anderson Mazoka, may you so rest in peace, what did we hear people like Cornelius Moetua campaign on, on behalf of Haga Inde Hijidema? That he had money. That's how they campaigned, he had money. He was the one financing the, the UPND. Now, from what uh, Cornelius has said, it is quite clear to us that uh, Haga Inde Hijidema continued to be president of the UPND even against the provisions of the UPND constitution, which at that time limited his tenure of office to only two terms, simply because people like uh, Cornelius Muetua were clamoring behind him because of the so-called money that he had.
For us in the patriotic front, Edgar Chagualungu was elected in 2015. And you remember what people like Cornelius Mwetwa were saying about Edgar Lungu, that he's a pauper from Chawama. He has no money whatsoever. But we still elected him as president of the patriotic front, not on the basis of money. And now he's come back. It's not because of money. We're not looking for money from President Edgar Chagualungu. Not at all. We're looking for his leadership. That's what we want. And look, President Edgar Lungu has been president of the Patriotic Front from 2015 until 2021 when he went on leave. And now he has come back. And over this period, we have seen that he has managed to hold the party together as a democratic president. All of us in the Central Committee of the Patriotic Front are capable of addressing issues in his presence. We don't treat him like a semi-god. Semi no, we don't. We treat him as a, a friend, as a peer, as a colleague, as a brother. And we see the qualities that he has. That is what the people are following. They're not following his money because in the first place he was not voted for because of his money. Unlike Unlike the president of Cornelius Moetwa, who was voted for because of the so-called money that he had amassed through privatization. That's not the case with Edgar Lungu. I, I would like to address the issue that you keep referring that uh, the former president was on leave when actually in his letter to the uh, secretary to the cabinet, he stated that he had resigned from active politics, both as president of the party uh, and, uh, and as a politician himself. Uh, why do you keep referring to leave when the letter he wrote to cabinet uh, says otherwise? Because he was to hand over the office of presidency of the Patriotic Front after the party had elected his successor. He was still holding on to the position of president of the Patriotic Front. And he was to hold that position and shall continue to hold that position until such a time that the party has elected his successor. Was, what, do you find it, will I be right to say that he prematurely wrote that letter? No, he did not. He wrote it timelessly and he stuck to it. And when he decided that things were not working in accordance with what he desired, he decided let me get back. He made the statement, uh, the former president, a few days ago, that uh, his worst as a, as a president is far much better than what is happening under the watch of President Haka in the um, This, again, has been criticized by UPND and including State House itself. But do you agree with former President Lungu's statement? Exactly. And I agree with that statement totally. And I'm willing to go to all heights in defending that statement. And I can give you numerous examples. Number one example, I'll borrow from what Cornelia said. When Edgar Lungu had nothing to his name, as far as they are concerned, nothing to his name, when they called him Chimbuino Plan, when they called him a pauper from Chawama, he stood against the angel from God, the only one man who was sent to come and rule Zambia, the richest Zambian, the most educated Zambian, the most intelligent Zambian, Hagainde Hijirema, who won? At his worst, Edgar Lungu beat Hagainde at his best. That's one example to show you that what Edgar Lungu said is true. But also in governance, President Edgar Lungu, in 2021, when he left presidency, what was the price of millimeal? Between 80 kwacha and 120 kwacha, a 25 kg bag. At his worst, 120 kwacha. Mr. Haga Inde Hijirema, two and a half years in government. At his best, what is the price of a bag of millimeal? 320 to 450 kwacha a bag. Huh? At his worst, Edgar Chagualungu's fuel price was 15 kwacha a liter. At his worst, because when he started in 2015, it was about 12, 11, it went at his worst, it was 15 kwacha per liter. Mr. Haga Inde Hijidema, at his best, it's 34 kwacha a liter. At his worst, when he was leaving government, President Edgar Lungu had 1.5 million metric tons of non-GMO maize in strategic reserves. 1.5 million metric tons of maize. At that time, there was a beautiful crop in the field. 
The following year, Zambia produced another 3 million metric tons because of the good policies of Edgar Chagwalungu at his worst. At his best, Mr. Againde Hejirema has no maize in the strategic reserves. Zero. Even the maize that he found, the 1.5 million metric tons in strategic reserves, the 3 million tons that were, were, were in the field, what did Mr. Againde at his best do? He exported it. When Edgar Lungu exported maize, he got at least 20% export duty into treasury. At his worst. And yet at his best, Mr. Hagainde Hijirema sold the maize without any duty accruing to treasury. At his worst, after 10 years of the PF government, President Edgar Lungu in Zambia had accumulated a debt of 11 billion, an average of 1.1 billion dollars a year. At his worst, 11 billion over 10 years, 1.1 billion dollars per year. At his best, the angel that is not. How much has he borrowed? Six billion in two years. 3.3 billion per year. At his best. Can you really compare? Now, even talking about the debt, at his worst, Edgar Chagwalungu having borrowed 11 billion kwacha, today you can point with more than fingers of 20 hands at what that money was used for. President Edgar Chagwalungu and the PF government found that Zambia was producing 1,600 megawatts of power in 2011. By the time Edgar Lungu, at his worst, was leaving State House, Zambia was producing double, 3,200 megawatts. At his worst, Mr. Hagainde Hijidema, the angel, how much power generation has he increased between the, the, these two and a half years? Zero. At his worst, Edgar Chagwalungu built hospitals across the country. Today, we are proud of these hospitals. Cancer Hospital, Levi Mwanawansa Hospital. We're proud of all these hospitals. Uh, uh, Muntanga Hospital in Kalomo. We're proud of these hospitals. At his worst, President Edgar Lungu built 680 health posts across the country. At his worst, President Edgar Lungu brought into Zambia the very first flyover highways. The very first. At his worst, President Edgar Lungu built the Lusaka Kenneth Kaunda International Airport, which the angel calls a sausage. At his worst, President Edgar Chagwalungu built the Simon Mwansaka Poepo Airport from scratch, from nothing. At his worst, President Edgar Chagwalungu built schools across the country. At his worst, President Edgar Chagwalungu built police posts and police stations. He built offices and houses for police officers, for soldiers, at his worst, from the 11 billion. At his best, Mr. Hagainde Ejidema cannot point at even a smoker toilet on which he built, he used the $6 billion. Except for the small little boreholes that is going around commissioning. Now, surely, can you even compare? I want to also say to you, in 2021, at his worst, President Edgar Lungu was giving farmer input support program to one million farmers. One million. Today, what are we talking about? People now having, having to go and borrow money. And by the way, even that agricultural credit program they've started, they read from our manifesto but did not understand the strategy. That is the reason why it is a shambolic program. It can't work. President Edgar Lungu, at his worst, stopped cholera in 2018. The last incidence of cholera, Zach, was in 2018. 2019, 2020, 21, 2022, the angel went and received the award of champion in the elimination of cholera. What decency commanded was for him to come to Zambia and say, this award is not deserved by me because I've only been in government for a year. This award is deserved by the person who actually ended cholera in 2018. He should have said this award belongs to Edgar Lungu. Instead, he personalized it. It is my award. Me, I am the champion. Two years along the line, we have a worse incidence of cholera than Zambia has ever known before. And people are still saying Lungu is the one who caused cholera. 
Lungu stopped cholera in 2018, for heaven's sake. 2021, there was no cholera. 2022, there was no cholera. Cholera comes in 2023. Two years after Edgar Lungu had left State House, who has caused that cholera? It would be very unfortunate and nonsensical for anyone to blame it on the patriotic front. Who is in charge today? It is the angel. So let the angel own up and just accept the fact that indeed the worst performance of Edgar Lungu is better than the best performance of Hagainde Hijidema. There is no question about it. The Barossiland issue is another case in point. You saw how the Barossiland issue was a big issue during the late President Rupia Banda's reign. When Michael Sata took over, what happened? There was quiet about it. When Edgar Lungu was president, there was quiet about that. Why? Because those two presidents were engaging with the royal establishment, the Barossi royal establishment, to try and find a lasting conclusion to the matter. They did not wish it away. They did not go to the Barossiland to say, yes, we're going to honor the Barossiland agreement when, you, when we form government. And straight after forming government, you go around and say, there is no place called Barossiland. That is being totally insincere. And this is the reason why you see that now this matter has come up again. And I'd like to commend my brother, Clement Sininda, for the position he took. And I want to say I stand with Sininda and I stand with the people of Barossiland on this matter. The Barossiland agreement exists and you can't wish it away. Simply to say that, yes, in 1964 we became a republic and therefore that agreement falls off is not right. Because it is that agreement that caused Zambia to become a unitary state. And if there are conditions in that agreement that were met by one side of the parties, the other party also is obliged to meet their conditions. That is what agreements are about. Now, under Ed Galungu, at his worst, the issue of Barossiland was under discussion. Under um, the angel Haga Inde Hijirema, at his best, people are raising concerns about his statements about the Barossiland. Is there anything more you want me to say? And I can tell you more and more. I can tell you. At his best, at his worst, Ed Galungu was saying to the Zambian people, and he was showing that he's a humble president for the people of Zambia. At his best, President Againde is going around threatening people. Now, we're not even allowed to even approach the police to tell them that we want to have a rally. Even we just go and say, I want to have a rally, they arrest you. They came and almost tear gassed us having an indoor meeting at a lodge. We're having a central committee meeting. Hagainde sent his police officers in riot gear and machine guns and heavy vehicle artillery to come and stop a small little indoor meeting at his best. You never heard, at the west of President Edgar Lungu, you never heard foreign diplomats saying, our companies are not willing to come into Zambia because of the growing corruption. But at his best, Mr. Hagainde Ejidema, foreign countries are telling him, we, our companies don't want to come because of rampant corruption in the country. At his worst, Edgar Lungu had drugs in hospitals. At his best, Haga India has no drugs in hospitals. At his worst, Edgar Lungu, in parliament, members of parliament were able to stand and de demand that the speaker allows them to be heard. They were not dismissed, they were not expelled, they were not suspended. At his best, Mr. Haga Inde Hijidema, when members of parliament stand in parliament to debate, they are curtailed, they are thrown out, they are threatened. At his worst, under President Edgar Lungu, you never heard Parliament calling private citizens to go and answer charges in Parliament. At his best, his Parliament today can summon anybody and anyone and reprimand them, even if they're not members of Parliament. I can go on and on, Zach, but I'm sure that there are many other issues that you'd like us to address. So I agree in, in, in totality, I agree that Edgar Lungu's performance at his worst is much better than the performance of Haga Inde Hijirema at his best. Let me, let me get to, again, to the party, uh, Patriotic Front, where some members appear to have given up and accepted that uh, the Matero MP uh, is the new party president. Others 
are proposing that uh, you people should decide to form another party. And, and, and talk us, take us through also the formation of people's movement. Does this mean truly that uh, you have given up the patriotic front and moved on? Where do you see the party in the next one year, or indeed up to 2026? That gives me another opportunity to just say to you, at his worst, Edgar Lungu did not comment about the internal affairs of other political parties. Never. But at his best, the angel president, Hagainde Sami Higurihwa Hagainde Hijirema, is interfering and commenting on internal matters of opposition political parties, such as telling some surrogate, Kulimba mwana, kulimba limbani, limbani. What kind of president is that? At his best, he's showing that he's following keenly with interest what is happening in opposition political parties. And he has no shame of showing his glee to the Zambian people that he's very happy with what is happening with the patriotic front. At his worst, President Edgar Chagwalungu had his kwacha valued at 17 kwacha to the dollar. At his best, the man who promised Zambian people that when you vote for me, 14 hours the kwacha will be 10 kwacha to the dollar. At his best, the kwacha is going towards 30 kwacha to the dollar. Now, those who are saying the patriotic front is dead, let them be less assured that the patriotic front is a spirit, a spirit that no one will kill. This is a spirit that was born in the heart of Michael Sata and was shared very rapidly with many people. Michael Sata's spirit was born much later than some other political parties, and yet that spirit swept the country and gripped a lot of people. And to date, that spirit still lives in many Zambians. And from what I see when I walk around the cities of Zambia, when I walk around the countryside, I can see that that spirit is running through and through many Zambians. So it is not possible to kill that spirit. And those who are suggesting change party, change party to what? No, we are not going to change the party. We are going to continue with the patriotic front because the patriotic front is going nowhere. It is not dying. The patriotic front is continue, is going to continue to exist. And mark my words, mark my words, for as long as Haga Inde's best continues to be worse than uh, Edgar Lungu's worst, surely in 2026 the Zambians will realize that they were duped. They were duped by voting for what they thought was an angel, and yet it turns out to be the worst. The rest you can add. Let's talk about the high cost of living coupled with high fuel prices. Many people, including your party, has condemned the current status quo. But we also know that the ruling uh, UPND has attributed this to your reckless borrowing uh, during your time in government. But today, we want you to we want to hear your solutions. Uh, you know, as as opposition. Alternative solutions. We want to hear alternatives from you, uh, the opposition, uh, who are supposed to provide us with alternatives. So what are some of the measures that you could have actually employed if you were in office to cushion the high cost of living? Now, I'm aware also that uh, the reason why the fuel prices were kept low is that you subsidized, your regime subsidized, even when you actually failed to pay uh, uh, the debt that was accrued through subsidies on fuel. <laughs> Zach, were you not as shocked as I was to read in the papers not a few, only a few weeks ago that uh, actually the money that was being used to subsidize had run out? Only a few weeks ago they reviewed that, oh, sorry, we were cheating you when we said that now you're paying cost-reflective prices of fuel. Huh? That's what they told us. But now, only a few weeks ago, they said, oh, we maintained this price stability because we had some money to cushion. What was that? A subsidy. Now they are telling us the truth. We are actually liars. 
we lied to you. So for us, we should have redeemed this country through honesty, through true, patriotic, sincere governance. No lies told. You are saying that the cost of living has increased because of uh, so-called uh, reckless borrowing. I just demonstrated to you, we borrowed on average $1.1 billion per year. If that is reckless, tell me what $3.3 billion borrowing per year is. If 1.1 per year is reckless, what adjective will you use for $3 billion borrowing per year? Madness, total madness, especially if you also compare to the produce, what is coming out of the 1.1 billion compared to what is coming out of the 3 billion. I demonstrated to you already that from the 1.1 billion per year, we built this country, we changed this country. From the 3 billion, what have we heard? We've heard about CDF and we're being told this is decentralization. What kind of decentralization is it where you say you are giving constituencies 28 million and then you are the ones who are determining now buy police vehicles for police officers in the constituencies, now buy ambulances, now go and do desks, now go and provide the palaces for chiefs, now go and do water and sanitation. What decentralization is that? This is just a mockery. It's a smoke screen. This is just a way of stealing. Can you tell me, Zach, your, view, your listeners there know that when you go to a motor vehicle supplier and you buy one vehicle, they don't give you commission. It's only one vehicle. When you buy 10, they give you a commission. You buy 20, they give you a bigger commission. What about when you buy 156? <laughs> where is that commission? We want to see where is the commission going? Let them tell us. You asked me a question, what could you have done? Number one, without Haga Inde, Ejidem, and UPND, things would have been much, much, much better because we couldn't have borrowed three billion per year no we could not have allowed for mineral royalty tax to go in the hands of foreigners no we had already started collecting from mineral royalty taxes we had started in 2020 2021 we received mineral royalty taxes in excess of millions of dollars come Haga in the Egypt, what has he done he has given all that tax free to foreign companies under Haga Inde Ijidema, what has happened to the economy of Zambia? It is more and more in foreign hands than in local hands. Huh? Now he's even telling us, <laughs> all of you, go farming. All of you. How do Zambia, all Zambians go farming? How? Where are the IT experts? They should also go farming? No. We want the IT experts to develop IT technology for farmers. We want them to develop IT technology for industry. We want the economy to be vibrant. We can't only have agriculture. We can't only have, and as a matter of fact, the person who's saying, all of you go farming. What incentives has he given to the farmers to go farming? Nothing. We, in our manifesto, were very clear on how we were going to run the agriculture sector. We were very clear. You saw the number of dams that we built. During the time that we were in government, we built several agricultural dams. Momboshi Dam here, close here. Today, go and see the production that it is introducing in the area of Chisamba. Go to Rusangashi and see. We had already decided that we are going to encourage Zambians to own shares in the mines so that their dividends stay in Zambia instead of them going to India and going to Switzerland. We talked about 24-hour economy. By now, Zambia, at least in Lusaka and the other cities, should have been running a 24-hour economy. They heard about it and talked about it. What have they done? Nothing. You remember what they said to us when we were putting all these cameras? They said these cameras are being put to spy on Haga Inde Ejidema. One man, we should dress the whole city, dress the whole country with cameras because of Haga Inde Ejidema. My foot. Now, they're very happy that those cameras are there and they're using them. But using them for what purpose? For us, we wanted to use those cameras to ensure that we provide security for us to have a 24-hour economy. Without the disturbance in 2021, the country now should have been looking up. The mineral royalty tax I'm talking about now should have been used to start paying back our debt. They bragged that we failed to negotiate an IMF agreement for seven years, and they did it in three months. He takes all headmasters from Lusaka, all teachers, all pupils to go and line up the street from airport 
to Lusaka celebrating that he had achieved the debt restructuring. A year later, what has happened? It has added to nothing. Zero. Noto. Talking about the, the, the mining industry, I mean, you've made reference to it. I mean, your uh, regime has been uh, tagged as a regime that was slowly collapsing the mining industry. And, 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 and talking about mineral royalties, I, I don't think you would have had anywhere to get mineral royalties from because you kept collapsing bigger in, uh, uh, mining companies. KCM is one of them, and Mopani got collapsed under your regime and many more probably were coming. Surely, you must give credit to the fact that what collapsed during your regime has been resuscitated. Figures speak volumes. And if you were to look at the Treasury report, you will see that at Edgar Lungu's worst in 2021, we received money as mineral royalty tax from, min from mining companies. At the best of other India, there is no money coming from mineral royalty tax. So how can you say we are collapsing the economy when actually we are collecting from the mining sector? What is not being collected now? You recall Michael Sata, in 2011 he said there is no way that we can continue to be taking our emeralds to be auctioned in India. I want the emeralds to be auctioned here in Zambia. Edgar Lungu, his successor, also said now that we have discovered that we, we have been losing gold, I'm not going to allow people to trade in gold willy-nilly. We formed what was called Zam Gold, and we came up with a law declaring gold as a strategic mineral, which was only to be handled through Zam Gold. Whoever was to mine gold was not given a license to export it. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.